I'm Chris, and in this video we're going to take a look at solving rational equations. In this case we're going to deal with some rather complex fractions. So what's really important to make sure that we're comfortable doing is finding a common denominator. Now this video is designed for students who already understand how to find common denominator numerically. So if you have one half plus one third and you're looking for the common denominator there, you would find the least common multiple between two and three, which would be six, and that would be your common denominator. So if you're not yet familiar with that, then you wanna make sure you go back and watch one of the earlier videos so that we can get the basics down. But if you are comfortable with that, we're gonna take a look at finding common denominator when dealing with variable expressions. So here we have x plus two, x, and then x times x plus two for our three fractions in this problem. And what we wanna notice is that x plus two x and x times x plus two, this is the most complex denominator and most of the time when you see something like that, this will give you a hint as to what the common denominator might be because we can tell here this is just the product of this denominator and this one. So to find our common denominator, we've multiplied those two times each other. So what you're gonna do if you know your common denominator, in this case it is just what you get as your result from multiplying x times x plus two you know that's gonna be the common denominator for each term. So the easiest thing to do is go ahead and write that down for each one. So x plus two times x, x times x plus two, and on our right side of our reaction we see x times x plus two. Okay, so we've got common denominator in place for each fraction in our problem. Now what we want to do is we want to go through and to see how we get from our original denominator to the common denominator we need to look at what we're multiplying by. So basically we're looking at what's missing. So from the original to get to here we already had the x plus 2 part but we were missing an x which means we need to multiply we're multiplying both the top and the bottom by x so times x over x for this. Here, we were missing an x plus 2. So we're really multiplying the top and the bottom times x plus 2. And here, luckily, we're all set with our common denominator. We don't have to multiply by anything. So the easiest thing to do there is just go ahead and bring that one down and write in the negative 14 to make that part easy. Now let's take a look at these first two. So here, when I multiply my numerator times x, 1 times x will give me x. And then for the second fraction, when I multiply um, this times x plus 2, for right now, we're going to write it out as just 3 times x plus 2. We'll talk about how the negative is going to play into it in just a moment. So now that all of our denominators are the same, if it's an expression where the left side equals the right side and all the denominators are the same, we can go ahead and cancel out those denominators and just set the numerators of each expression equal to each other. So for this, it'll look like x minus 3, and that's where the negative comes into play. Ultimately, we're going to be distributing a negative 3 here, times x plus 2 equals negative 14. Now, with this, we distribute the negative 3, and we get x minus 3x minus 6 equals negative 14. And to solve, x minus x will give us a negative 2x. Minus 6 equals negative 14. We add 6 to the other side, so we have a negative 2x equals a negative 8. And when dividing by a negative 2, we're left with x equals 4. So that's our answer for x. Are we done? So hopefully you said no, we're not quite done because there is one last thing that you have to check. And what you have to do is take whatever number you come up with for x, and if you came up with more than one answer, depending on the question, then you'd have to test each answer that you come up with. But you take the four in this case, and you're gonna plug it back in for x into your original expression and you're going to make sure that none of these denominators would be equal to zero. And that's because if a denominator equals zero, that means the fraction is undefined, and you would therefore not include that value in your solution. So here, 4 plus 2 is 6, that one's 4, 
and 4 times 6 is 24. So luckily we're in good shape on this problem because we don't get 0 for any of those. So 4 is in fact our solution. If any of those denominators did give you a 0 when plugging in 4, then you would write no solution as your final answer. But for this particular problem, we're done. We get x equals 4. And if you really wanted to go back and make sure that you hadn't made any mistakes along the way, you could always plug in 4 and solve the entire equation numerically just to make sure you have the right answer. For more, please feel free to check out our website or watch our other videos. Thanks for watching.